guessing that you're really yearning to hear what's going on in Costa Rica. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. So, as I said, I'm, I'm really feeling connected to you already. I'd like to share with you the prophecy of Razur, which is the prophecy that has really inspired my work in Costa Rica. Razur tells the children that he has to go on to other children and teach them as well. But he says that these children in Costa Rica have a, a role to play, that they must remember what he's taught them, and that they must model peace to the world. This was in 1946, two years before they ever thought about abolishing the army. So two years after this poem was written, this 85-page poem, they abolished their army very unexpectedly. At the end of the poem, the parents conclude that they need to really integrate what Razur has taught them, this peace teacher, and that they must live it. And one parent says, you know, before directing the lightning in the sky, we must first harness the storms in our own hearts. So this is the, the legacy that Razur left them. And the implication is that they really own this teaching and continue to live it so that the prophecy that Costa Rica will become a culture of peace will unfold and become a, a realis, realized dream. You may have heard that Costa Rica doesn't have an army, but did you know that it's the only country in the world with no army and no defense arrangement? And these are the invitations that we've received to form academies for peace using this same methodology in Central America. So far we've only been able to respond to one invitation and that is to Guatemala. I went to Guatemala and did quite a few workshops there. However, our aim is to create Costa Rica as a model that other countries can look to. And so we're really focused on just completing the model in Costa Rica so that it's so obvious that peace works. This is what we want to show. That it not only works in terms of reducing violence, but that it's good economically. You know, a lot of Costa Rica's economy is based on tourism. And a lot of that tourism is because people are fascinated by this little country that's about the size of West Virginia that has decided to stand for peace. But I cannot talk about the model in Costa Rica without talking about the methodology. Why? Because to try to have an authentic culture of peace without having citizens practicing peace skills at the grassroots level is never going to cut it. What we're trying to do through the Razur Foundation is both a top-down through the Ministry for Peace and a bottom-up through teaching, teaching peace skills to the citizenry. And we feel it's really important to do both. And then I observed in myself and in other people these wonderful ideals, but how do I do it right now? So for about 10 years of my life, I searched among social emotional learning methods to find the very best. And finally, in that search, I chose heart math and nonviolent communication. And so, let me tell you about Gabriel. He was one of my experiments. So Gabriel was acting out every day in our school. He was hitting. He was violent. He was acting out at home. Uh, he was just a terror. <laughs> and so, we talked to Gabriel, we talked to his parents, we didn't really come up with an easy answer. But what we believed in our little school was that the answer was within Gabriel if we could help him to access it. That all the answers are within us if we can just find our way there. So in the first frame here, we asked Gabriel to draw a picture of the problem in his life, of the violence in his life. So he drew this picture of himself being held back by his mother as he tries to hit his brother and sister. And we know that when Gabriel is focused on the problem that he's generating an erratic heart rate variability. Then we ask Gabriel 
to do just what we did to go inside his heart to breathe through his heart and to generate a feeling of appreciation for a happy time in his life so then we had him draw it so he drew this picture of himself at the beach with the dolphins in the background playing with his Ken doll He's got his Ken doll there in his hand we have Ken dolls in Costa Rica too okay so now we know that because Gabriel is focused on this moment that he appreciates in his life that his heart rate variability is now moving into coherence in the third frame we ask Gabriel to now go inside his heart ask his heart what it has to say about the problem in his life and listen so Gabriel did that listening to his heart and suddenly it's like he's got this surprise look on his face so we asked him to draw what his heart said so he drew this picture the one on the far right with the bed and so we said Gabriel what's that about he said my heart told me I'm not getting enough sleep he said I'm going to bed really late at night and my mom doesn't know it and she comes and she shakes me in the morning and I am just furious and I'm mad all day long because I'm so tired now this was completely hidden to Gabriel moments before you know we talked to him he had no idea and so because he found his own answer he was very willing to change his bedtime all of his violent behavior disappeared and at the end of the year he got the leaf off the tree of virtues for the most improvement in compassion I'd like to just think for a moment about what this means here in the US you know I was invited to be a part of the National Academy for Peace meeting in Cleveland that took place in April how many of you knew about that that the US is now in the process of founding your Peace Academy your National Peace Academy no Kucinich wasn't there his wife was <laughs> so I was invited to be a, a key thought partner at this meeting because of our Academy for Peace in Costa Rica and um, so at this meeting you know they're starting to to lay out how to have a peace academy for the US it's already been agreed that Case Western Reserve University in Ohio will launch it so you got a solid partner that's good news isn't it yeah that's good news and I'm confident that they're going to move forward and I'm hoping that your Department for Peace will move forward you know that even though the Democratic Party recently said that it's uh, not a priority or that it's too controversial that in fact it is happening all over the world just yesterday I had a conference call with the Global Alliance for Ministries and Departments for Peace by the way I serve as the training facilitator for the Global Alliance for Ministries and Departments for Peace because they are sold on Be Peace you see so do you see what's happening here we got a global alliance of over 36 countries working to set up their departments and ministries for peace we've got Costa Rica and the US working on their academies for peace and we've got a group of people that are beginning to accept a proven methodology called Be Peace that means we're get, getting all the pieces of the puzzle to come into view at least even though they're not in place but they're very close to being in place in Costa Rica I am predicting that by the end of this year we will have our ministry for peace with our academy for peace teaching be peace in all the schools of Costa Rica <laughs>